I'm Michael Fosna, a graduate student at The Ohio State University. In this video, I'll be discussing our recent paper, Space Telescope and Optical Reverberation Mapping Project 3, Optical Continuum Emission and Broadband Time Delays. The Space Telescope and Optical Reverberation Mapping Project, or Aegean Storm, is an intensive multi-wavelength monitoring campaign of the archetypal C41 galaxy NGC 5548. The campaign is anchored by daily far UV observations using the Cosmic Origin Spectrograph on the Hubble Space Telescope. An analysis of the HST data from 2014 is presented in DeRosa et al. 2015, the first paper of this series. The cost program was complemented by a four-month photometric monitoring campaign using the SWIFT Observatory, the first results of which are presented in the second paper of this series, Edelson et al. 2015. This paper is the third in the Aegean Storm series, detailing ground-based broadband photometric monitoring of NGC 5548, extending our previous analysis with data in nine optical filters. In terms of temporal baseline, wavelength coverage, and cadence, the Aegean Storm project represents the most complete reverberation mapping experiment ever conducted. The primary goal of the current work is to search for inner band continuum lags in an attempt to map the size and structure of the Aegean's continuum emitting source. UV and optical emission of the Aegean continuum are believed to originate in a geometrically thin, optically thick accretion disk with an additional hot corona component that emits X-rays. If the corona is relatively compact and centrally located, the X-ray emission may irradiate the outer accretion disk, driving UV and optical variations that echo the X-ray emission. Therefore, time delays between the X-ray light curve and UV optical light curves represent the light travel time across the disk, which can be mapped to a temperature profile by translating the wavelength of the observed continuum to a characteristic temperature. This figure shows the continuum light curves used in this study arbitrarily rescaled and shifted for clarity. The HST 1367 Angstrom light curve was presented in paper one, while the swift X-ray near UV and optical light curves were presented in paper two. The current paper presents the ground-based optical light curves in Johnson Cousins BVRI and SDSS UGRIZ filters. The data set is very heterogeneous with 16 contributing observatories that achieved approximately daily cadence in all filters for the entire monitoring campaign. Three additional far UV light curves extracted from the HST cost spectra are also presented here. Several important details of the light curves are evident in this figure. First, the vertical scale shows the relative amplitudes of fluctuations in the light curves. The far UV light curves vary in excess of 40%, while the reddest optical bands vary by only 5%. The optical light curves also appear to be somewhat smooth compared to the far UV emission. For example, the rapid oscillations near the middle of the campaign are reproduced at all wavelengths, but the smaller amplitudes and gentler inflections at longer wavelengths. These features support a continuum reprocessing model in which the X-ray or far UV emission drives variations at longer wavelengths. The damped amplitudes are due to geometric dilution so that a smaller energy flux is incident on the outer parts of the disk that radiate at longer wavelengths, while the smoothing and time delays result from convolution of the driving light curve with the transfer function defined by the size, inclination, and physical properties of the accretion disk. We measure the time delay between light curves using cross-correlation techniques, and following papers one and two, we measure all lags relative to the HST 1367 Angstrom light curve. This figure shows the relation between time delays and pivot wavelengths of the filters corrected for cosmological time dilation. There's a clear trend with larger lags for light curves at longer wavelengths. The V-band lags the far UV emission by approximately two days, while the Z-band lags the far UV by about four days. For comparison, the average helium-2 line lag is 2.5 days relative to the far UV. Helium-2 is believed to originate in the inner broadline region. If these time delays do in fact represent light travel times, our results suggest that the optically emitting portion of the disk is of a similar physical size as the inner broadline region. The trend is also nearly monotonic, with two noticeable exceptions. First is the flattening of the lags at long wavelengths near four days. Second are the large time delays of the SDSS U and SWIFT U bands. This may be due to broadline region emission picked up in these filters, which has a longer lag and may bias the estimate of the continuum lag at these wavelengths. Based on spectral decompositions and synthetic photometry, we show that the Balmer continuum accounts for approximately 19% of the emission in the SDSS U and SWIFT U bands. From experiments with mock continuum and line light curves, we find that this contamination probably accounts for the larger than expected lags in these bands. We therefore exclude the SDSS U and SWIFT U bands from the rest of our analysis. Finally, we fit a model to the lag wavelength data shown by the equation in the top left of the figure. The model has two parameters, a normalization and a power law index. The normalization is a measure of the absolute size of the disk and is related to the energy generation rate from accretion and irradiation, while the power law slope is predicted to be four-thirds for a geometrically thin disk with a temperature profile of r to the minus three-fourths. Our best fit parameters are alpha equals 0.79 days and beta equals 0.99. 
Although the flatter value of beta is statistically preferred, the result is driven by the downturn at the I and Z bend lags, and we find that beta is consistent with four-thirds if these lags are excluded from the fit. For standard thin disk parameters, the prediction for alpha is 0.16 days, a factor of 2.6 smaller than our best fit, assuming the R to the minus three-fourths temperature profile. A better match is achieved by increasing the accretion rate above the Eddington rate. However, at these accretion rates, the disk is unlikely to remain geometrically thin, which violates the assumptions of our model. An alternative interpretation is that the accretion disk is a factor of 2.6 larger than the prediction of standard thin disk theory. The larger disk size is in good agreement with other recent reverberation mapping studies, as well as quasar microlensing results. Further investigation of the accretion disk structure in NGC 5548 will benefit from physical modeling of the Aegean storm light curves, and several such studies are planned for upcoming papers in this series. For further details, please see our paper, which includes a discussion of the large UV optical lags, implications for the mean radius and geometry of the broadline region, and the effect on the supermassive black hole mass. Thank you for watching.